Welcome back everyone to my Let's Play of Ogre Battle, March of the Black Queen. We're going to start off this episode by revisiting Diaspola, which we just liberated from um, the rule of the Empire. In our last episode, we ended up recruiting the leader, uh, Norn, to our side as well. So, as long as you have 60 plus reputation as a male or 55 plus as a female, you can recruit Norn. Have you heard of Centaur? He was an ancient demon in Legends. Statues of him are used as charms, but the statues vary by region to region. There's a wizard here who collects them. I think his name is Borgnine. I went a little fast there, but, uh, yeah, um, uh, Borgnine is that wizard we were told who visited, uh, tried to visit Grand Monk, uh, Forest back in Island Avalon, but when she wasn't there, he, uh, he basically left her in a hurry. Well, he came to this area, and apparently he's a collector of, uh, Centaur Demon statues. And we actually got one of them, uh, as a reward for helping, uh, Posha out. Uh, she was the woman whose, uh, mother was sick, and her father went looking for the cure. Much of the Calbian Peninsula in the south is covered by snow this time of year. Even though that area will be opening up to us shortly, uh, we're not going to go there until much later in the game, because uh, there's some special dialogue that we get if we have a certain special character in our party, so we're going to hold off on going there. So, Please hurry up and make this a nice world again. We will try. But, uh, yeah, we ended up getting uh, one of those uh, Centaur Demons, and we're going to use that to try to make a trade with Borgnine, but we're going to keep refusing to make the trade. I heard that one of the four devas, General Fogar, is in Calba. Calba. I wonder why. And the reason we're going to refuse that trade is because every time we refuse that trade, our reputation will drop by five points. We want to get our reputation down to 40, because after this, we can go back to Deneb's uh, garden and recruit her. Because one of the things we're about to do is we're about to end up buying uh, that uh, golden bow that she needs for her research. So, let's go to the item here. We're going to buy the, the the bow here. Got some boots. And those can transport a unit anywhere. Uh, so, you can use it to save some time. Uh, say like you're about to... Uh, you have a, a unit that costs more than 3,000 uh, goth to, uh, to deploy. And it's about time to get your tributes. Well, you can teleport them back to the your base, and then uh, you can uh, send them back to base and save that money. Over the last several years, we've lost many freedoms. Freedom of speech, freedom of religion, freedom of marriage, freedom even to bear children. How bad can things get? See, so yeah, you can use your boots I just did there just to save some time. Uh, so I can try to get out of this map before the, the new day comes along. Please hurry and make this world nice again. Uh, but yeah, you can use the boots to teleport to any city that you've already liberated. And you can use them during actual battles. You don't have to wait until, you know, uh, after the scenario is completed. So it's a good way to get move units moved around, but we will not be really using them. So, so yep, the snow may slow us down. Yeah, because uh, units suffer a terrain penalty, a movement penalty when moving in snow. Unless the unit type is uh, snow move snow movement, so, and we don't have any of them, so, we will eventually, some of our good alignment dragons, ice, dra ice giants, uh, will become, uh, ice units, so, or snow moving units, but, it's not a very, uh, uh, common terrain, so, now, uh, in some of the later maps, in the highlands, uh, there'll be a lot of snow, but for the most part, it's very rare, uh, rare uh, land, so. How did things get this bad? I don't know, but hopefully Orpheus can, uh, you know, change things up. So, we're going to skip that uh, city up there, because that's the city that we're going to go to to uh, decrease our reputation. That's where Borg9 the Wizard is. And, uh... We'll talk more about him when we get to him. 
Oh, yes. Most people telling us the same thing over and over again. So, of course, we turn to the map screen here. We've got all the seas except for that one up in the northeast. And that's where uh, Borg 9 is. So, because we completed the postal side quest, we um, have that free Centaur Demon. So, to the south there, we have uh, the uh, Calbian Peninsula. But we're going to wait, like I said, until much, much later in the game to to go there because we got some special dialogue and we can get a special item if we go there so just use our boots got another pair of boots and we're gonna just warp up to this area right there Joink. and once we get to the city we get Borgnine I'm the stupendous wizard Borgnine oh a central demon and it's one I haven't got yet so he offers us three choices uh, one is 10,000 goth, the other is uh, undead staff, and the last is a stone of dragos. Every time we fuse him, like I said, see, our reputation goes down by five points. So, uh, the money is kind of useless. Uh, you can get, uh, if you really need money, uh, you know, you can get the 10,000. Uh, the two items there, uh, the stone of dragos sells for 10,000, so you won't make any profit by getting that. And the... Uh, Undead staff sells for 8,400, so if you're looking for money, you want to get the uh, the money. Because the two items sell for less than the uh, than the money that you'll, you'll get. Well, the Strang of Dragos, you'll break even, but... Probably the best item is the Undead Staff, because it transforms your uh, mages into sorcerers, basically doubling their uh, effectiveness, so... So this is how my army is going to be set up for the next uh, battle. It's going to be in uh, the uh, Castellation Sea. So there's going to be a lot of water, and uh, we want to have some water units and some flying units to move around. So I'm going to also promote a few more uh, units here. Uh, so Bison, he just became a mage. I have an undead staff. I will use that to turn him into a sorcerer. I'm going to turn uh, one of our griffins into a uh, cockatrice. And uh, they're uh, pretty useful. Uh, they can uh, target with their petrification spells uh, pretty much anyone. Uh, you know, like for instance, like if we have a, a unit like uh, Norn again, where we have an annoying shaman, uh, you can, uh, leading the pack, we can uh, set the tax to leader and uh, turn the, the shaman into stone so that, uh, you know, she can't heal her, uh, companions. Use our undead staff and turn, uh, our new mage there into, uh, sorcerer. Now we can ask two, uh, back row attacks. I'm just looking at my units there. I put, uh, I made some extra units there just to, uh, uh, put the characters, the special unit characters, so that they're not hanging out in the reserve pool there. So, we got the Zenobians here, Lion and Ash, and then the, the uh, Tactics Ogre group on uh, 17 with Lands, uh, and then the ones for, uh, that'll be in uh, Ogre Battle 64 in the other unit, so. All right, well, we dropped a reputation. We got the golden uh, bow. So now we can head to back to Deneb's garden. So all that matters is your reputation has to be uh, 40 or below. No uh, alignment requirement. So that's good because uh, we didn't want to have Orpheus lose any alignment. So we want him to be a, a good boy. Now, he may not be... You know, a famous boy anymore because his reputation has dropped, but it's okay. We can build that back up. Another fairy here. We can recruit it, but we don't need any uh, more fairies. We already have the two that we've uh, transformed into uh, sylphs, so we'll just end up dismissing her. So. Let's just go dismiss that, that fairy. There she is, down there at the bottom. Checking out our characters there. Beastmen got a few things. 
uh, we end up getting uh, another uh, um, a tiger man there. So I found another uh, full moon uh, stone. So we have two beast man, two tiger man, and now we're gonna get another witch. Oh, I'm so happy! That's the golden bow. Hang on a second, okay? Presto, look, look, I made it, the glass pumpkin. You look bored, what do you want then? I know it's me you want, isn't it? Yes, why you say so soon, I'm glad to join you. Now we get a pumpkin item. Now what that pumpkin item does is you can use it on a witch. Witches normally uh, recruit uh, only hellhounds when, they're, uh, when they go to a city. But if you use the pumpkin item on any witch, that witch will be able to uh, recruit uh, pumpkin heads. And we got two of them right there with ten denim, so we don't really need uh, to recruit any more pumpkin heads. But we'll throw denim in a special unit there. So she's out of our way. Let me just check out her stats there. She has pretty good high intelligence there, so... Uh, but like I said, we will not be using uh, any of the special characters, so uh, we will put, uh, what should we call it, uh, eh, uh, Norn in with this Zenobian unit, and Deneb will be in a unit that will uh, be like our supernatural group, so we can get some characters from like a future uh, uh, that are like kind of like heavenly characters, so. So, yep, so Glass Pumpkin allows you to summon pumpkin heads. We just use that on any of our witches. And then now, like I said, if, whenever she goes to a city, we can recruit uh, pumpkin heads. So. And we got this pumpkin plus item. We can use that on a regular pumpkin head, and it'll transform it into a Halloween. And that'll basically double, see, uh, what it can uh, use. So, now we'll have two uh, front row attacks and two back row uh, pumpkin head attacks. So, I'm just going to do something here uh, really, really uh, quick, kind of uh, off, uh, off the standard. I'm just going to jump into this uh, scene real quick, liberate a few um, cities and temples just to show you the dialogue that they get. Because I will not be liberating these... Uh, cities during the actual campaign. So I just want to show off all the dialogue. I'll explain why I'm not going to liberate them during the campaign. So we'll just send out two quick units uh, who can fly to uh, liberate a few uh, places. Uh, mainly stuff that's kind of around the base uh, are the things that I'm not going to be liberating during the actual campaign. So you won't get to see the dialogue, but I want to show off the dialogue, so that's why I'm liberating them here now. And I'll explain everything a little bit more later when we actually start the campaign. So, sun card there. There are a lot of cities on the Castellat Islands. What do you mean you don't see them? Okay. And, uh, cities are, uh, gonna be hidden, uh, but kind of like the treasures. Uh, so you just gotta fly around. I'll point them where they're all at, so. And there's gonna be a little temple down here. So we're sending this unit down here to it. We found a Roshian temple. Let's liberate it. And learn more about what's going on here. So yeah, once you finish a, a thing, obviously the dialogue changes, so. I wanna show this dialogue off, uh what you would get while you're actually doing the campaign. Because, uh, we'll just be seeing the other dialogue. An ugly war between the humans and more people, more people is brewing. Please try to stop it. So, uh, one of the reasons why I'm doing this is because, uh, our reputation took a really bad hit. So we can kind of save scum, uh, and these cities that are really close to the thing, when we go back, uh, we can save, do a quick liberation of a city uh, once the area is done, and hope to draw like a, a fortune card or a temperance card, something that'll boost our reputation by two or three points. 
because we need to build our reputation up to about uh, 55 to get the next special character. We don't have a lot of maps to do it in, so... Uh, we have a little bit more maps, but by doing so, we'd miss some special dialogue. Many people have different opinions. What is black to one is white to another. Don't just believe everything everyone says. Be sure to think for yourself. If you don't, there's no way you can know the difference between good and evil. There uh, is a special character that we can recruit that doesn't have a reputation requirement. All that is required is that key of destiny that we got from Banya the nurse back in uh, the slums of Zenobia. But that would give us an extra map. But recruiting that character would miss out on some special dialogue. So... Uh, what we're going to do, like I said, is keep some cities close by so when we come back to this uh, area later, uh, after we uh, liberate it from the Empire, we have a bunch of cities that we can go to real, real quick and hopefully draw cards like the Temperance there to give us plus two, so. And uh, this uh, thing says, uh, since we're walking with the gods, because uh, you have a good alignment, reputation doesn't matter, as long as you have reputation, of uh, 35 or more, that uh, monk there in that temple will give you the Brunhild sword, which is a necessary requirement to get the best ending in the game for several reasons. I'll explain them as soon as we go through this dialogue here from this city. Emperor card? Too bad we won't be keeping any of these cards because we're going to restart. Uh, from the save I made. The more people are hoping to run the humans out of Castellat and create a country of their own. This used to be a peaceful place, but now there's constant fighting everywhere. So, uh, we'll just restart the game from the save I made before. Uh, I did that liberation. And we're gonna actually start the scenario right here now. So we won't be liberating all those, uh, cities and temples that I just did, uh, uh, in that last little section right there. But the Bruin Hill is an important sword because um, we learned uh, earlier about Chaos Gates. Chaos Gates are uh, basically... Uh, they're basically uh, gates that take you to the floating islands, the heavens. And we need to go to them to recruit some special characters uh, required for the special ending. Plus the Bruin Hill is one of three sacred treasures in the game. And all three sacred treasures are needed to get the best ending. So, Brunhild, though, is really easy to get. Uh, it only requires a reputation of 35 uh, or more, where the other ones are going to be uh, much, much uh, higher. So, uh, the other two are the... Uh, the, the other two are the, uh, the armband, uh, which is 65 plus reputation, and then the Holy Grail, which is a 70 plus uh, reputation, so... We have plenty of time to build up our reputation uh, to get those, because those two items, I mean, we won't be able to get them until very near the very end of the game. But, like I said, the next special character we got to get, we got to have at least 55 uh, alignment to get, so uh, we're going to, uh, or 50 uh, uh, reputation to get, not alignment. Uh, so, we got to build that up pretty quickly, so we don't have a lot of time to do that, so that's why we're going to just kind of cheat a little bit with the, 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 the save scummy, as you could say. We'll save the game, go in, liberate a town. If we don't get the card we want, then we'll just reset and just keep doing that. we got a few uh, cities there. Uh, I think there was like five that we liberated, so we can get potentially, you know, 10 to 15 free points of uh, reputation. So we just found this hidden city here. Remember, they're saying there's a lot of hidden cities, but we weren't able to see them, but I'll be pointing them all out. This city is going to be very important because it's kind of our uh, main base that we're going to be using to thwart the Empire. And we ended up getting a nice card there, the world card. So everybody will get the bonuses of the tarots. Have you heard eating mermaids will make you immortal? If you meet any mermaids, let us know. We'll share them with you. Well, I guess now we know why the mermaids people want to remove the humans from this area because they're, they're eating them. That's not good. So a lot of the enemies here will actually be uh, mermaids. That's why we have our own little water units that we're going to be uh, stationing around here. Enemy units are basically going to be coming from the north uh, around the tip of the island and then coming straight down where our units are. See where that uh, Eagle Man unit is coming down. And then the land-based units that the Empire has 
I'm gonna come across the main island and try to cross this little narrow uh, body of water this straight there so we'll be uh, sending our land units over there to where that temple and city are that's where we meet them but our water units will be using the city that Orpheus just uh, the city that Orpheus uh, liberated as their place to recharge and heal up so uh, in terms of Imperial forces here we're going to have 23 uh, units coming after us uh, not including the boss unit so a large mix uh, will be uh, water we have uh, Let's see, we have uh, nine uh, units that are basically going to be water movements, uh, three different types, mermaids with uh, cr uh, krakens, which are the advanced octopuses, eagle men with octopuses, and uh, mermaid with octopuses, so uh, we'll be seeing a lot of them. Uh, and then for land units, we got uh, mainly dragons, uh, some red dragons led by wild men, uh, regular dragons led by knights. Mages uh, leading giants, uh, and then uh, shamans leading Valkyries, and then the final thing is the uh, a flying unit, the wizards and hawkmen, who we kind of just met earlier. So we'll get to see some of our mermaids in action as well. Mermaids uh, can eventually promote. Uh, they can promote eventually into Nixies, uh, and they trade their uh, Blizzard spell in the background. Uh, they trade that for a hit all uh, spell. So pretty, pretty, pretty decent. Uh, so the Valkyries uh, are going to be pretty, pretty good in this area. Uh, so that's why I have my, most of my Valkyries in the uh, C units here, because Valkyries have the lightning spell, their bolt spell there, and um, naturally uh, water uh, enemies have a weakness to bolt, that's their worst resistance. So she'll be doing uh, decent damage to the octopus and the mermaids, so. And uh, I mentioned mermaids transforming into Nixies. Uh, at level 11, if they have a charisma of 50 plus, or an alignment between 50 and 100, they can uh, upgrade from mermaids into nixies. And uh, at level 12, uh, octopuses can finally turn into krakens, uh, as long as they have an alignment between 55 and 100, which shouldn't be hard for our octopus to get because they haven't been using a lot of, uh, haven't been in a lot of fights. So obviously, when they're in fights here now, they're going to be under leveled, uh, which means that. Remember, when you're underleveled and you defeat an enemy, uh, you get a big boost to your alignment and your uh, and your charisma. So, and I mentioned about that. I have that in one of my uh, earlier uh, video descriptions. It's actually in. Uh, if you want to see, uh, go back to video uh, number 15, where I describe how uh, you know alignment, uh, the alignment stat works when uh, advancing it, so. Video 15. That's where I did some manipulation to uh, Orpheus's alignment to get him really high up and change some of the uh, other characters that I wanted to promote to, uh, to you know, the evil classes. Uh, how to beat up on some weaker units. So that way they can become, uh, you know, ninjas and wild men. So, so I can get those classes, because for the most part, most of my fighters were becoming, you know, good alignment, and they were transforming into knights and samurais, but we're going to have a balance of armies. Because remember, you want to have uh, some good units to fight during the day, bad units to fight during the night. So, if you only uh, have one type of unit, you know, you're going to suffer 50% uh, of the time, so... If you have, like, all evil units, you're not going to fight well during the day. If you have all, you know, good units, you're not going to fight during the night. And, you know, this is a strategy RPG, so you got to, you know, be strategic. you got to balance your army out. So, and surprisingly, uh, you know, your reputation doesn't matter in terms of, uh, 
you know, if you're whole on. You say you did have a whole army that was like fully evil, you can still get the best ending and uh, because it's mainly based on your reputation and your leader's alignment. Uh, that's what matters when recruiting special characters, getting special items. Uh, it doesn't look at the composition of your army. So, you can have a high reputation, a good leader, uh, you know, and have him just liberate all the cities. So, which is mainly what, you know, I've been doing. I've just been having Orpheus, you know, because he has good alignment, good charisma. Uh, so naturally we get the best boost uh, when we liberate cities to the reputation because we're putting on that, you know, that good face of the rebellion. So, yeah, all that matters is, you know, the, the face of the rebellion. So if your leader's good or your liberating units are good, uh, you know, everybody else in your army can be, you know, evil or you know, have the appearance of being evil, you know, you can be running around with ghosts and skeletons and, you know, dark, you know, knights in black armor, you know, werewolves, vampires and stuff like that, you know, it doesn't matter. What matters is your leader's alignment and reputation, so. But we're just keeping the, the variety, so. We'll eventually have to shift this unit around a little bit. So yeah, I mentioned that uh, a lot of their land units are dragon units led by, uh, you know, knights or wild men. So I guess they're doing, you know, the whole balancing. So this is like a good day unit, and then they'll have a good night unit with the wild men and red dragon. Uh, but I'll have to be shifting my things around right now. I have my golem on the far left there, so he can concentrate all his firepower on that dragon on the left, and then I'll push him over to the right, and then he can concentrate his firepower on the dragon on the right. And I have my other unit. Uh, with a titan built like that too, where you know, one of them's on one side and the, the other, so. Flying units, if you have eagle men, see they use thunder. Uh, they only have one in the back row, so they could, uh, they're potentially a good unit to have in the back row if you're using flying units to fight these octopi and mermaids. So, Bunk. That, uh, that unit's crippling itself by putting its octopus in the back row. They get their tax halved. In the back row, octopus only have, uh, you know, uh, two attacks in the front row, they get four. So, even though octopus is under leveled, he's, uh, doing some good damage there. Helps that he's equipped with a weapon, so, a white magic weapon. I guess he has the rune axe, I think. Uh, we got the Brunhild sword in the last. We're gonna get that later. You can get the Brunhild sword at any time. Uh, so, uh, it doesn't have to be during the, the battle here, you can get it afterwards when you, uh, after you clear the area, uh, whenever, so, we'll get the Brunhild sword later, uh, cause like I said, we're saving that temple to liberate later. Uh, Brunhild is a really good item, like I said, not only does it, like, open up the chaos gates that allow you to get all these special characters to get the best ending in the game, but, uh, it's basically the strongest uh, white magic uh, weapon uh, in the game. It gives plus uh, twenty plus twenty strength uh, to anyone using it. Uh, the next strongest white is the Zanzibar sword, which gives plus eighteen strength. So, uh, sadly, we'll just we'll end up throwing the Brunhild on uh, our Griffin, uh, who's hanging out with Orpheus. So it's kind of fitting that. The Brunhild sword, because it's a very special sword, will stay in Orpheus's unit. So, although Orpheus doesn't need it, because he's in the back row and he has the uh, Ice Cloud from the back row, so that's a magic-based attack. So he wouldn't benefit from the strength that the Brunhild gives. Plus, you know, we want to have Orpheus survive, so Orpheus is better off getting a defensive item. So, and the Brunhild will help our. Uh, Octopus, oh, uh, Griffin in the front row because he's basically the only attacker in Orpheus's unit, so that plus 20 strength will help him out when he has to, if Orpheus's unit has to fight, which we don't want it to do, but occasionally he sometimes gets called on to fight, and when that happens, well, that plus 20 strength will help the Griffin deal some damage. So, let's see if we can finish off this unit here. We don't have a lot of attacks, but. Gotta get the golem, got a hit with uh, his one of two remaining attacks. Woohoo! Good job. 
It shouldn't have been that hard. We're fighting an octopus on the land. You can't be that maneuverable on land. So. Bunk. Our land units have almost made it across the sea. So this is good, uh, because we're almost across the sea. Uh, and their units are still on the land. Whenever we fight, we're fighting uh, on land. As you can see, our characters are on grass there, so even though they're not necessarily on the land, remember, uh, when two units are moving toward each other, they'll fight on the land in between them, so. Otherwise, you fight on the land of the unit that's not moving, so. Those units will eventually want to try to get back on land, so we just gotta have somebody stationed there to block them off. We gotta hope that our high flying unit meets that low flying unit, that remaining Eagle Man, before he gets to the city and gets some more octopi. Woohoo, we stunned. That's good. Now we just gotta hope that our doll mage doesn't wake that mage up in the background. And of course he did, because whenever you want something to happen, it doesn't happen. So. But it's only a mage, we get one uh, hit all attack. Uh, not good. But hopefully our shaman can heal us all up. The only bad thing is the shaman has three heals and we got hit, all four of our characters got hit, so. Donk, and that unfortunately caused us to lose, so don't back to the water for you. But that's okay, it lets our witch unit get some uh, fighting in here now. So this unit is built similarly to the uh, other unit, but instead of a golem, we have a titan in the front row. Titan has three clubbing attacks. We saw them uh, in action when we fought Norn. So, and we have this one staggered with the uh, titan on the right. So, and depending on the unit that we fight, well, you know, we might have to switch the titan around, you know, push it into the far left or the far right, just like I said we would do with our golem unit. So. Aha, uh -huh. we took out that regular giant there. We won't be recruiting them. Any giants that we recruit will recruit uh, already in their advanced classes. So, well, that's it for this episode. Come back in our next episode where we continue the fight. Uh, hopefully, we can resolve this war between the people and the folk. Take care. Have a good day. Bye.